So from the very beginning, we, before we even formed a sense of what the core parts of our strategy would be, we went, we set out to learn from others. And so we convened people from across various sectors. Uh, we brought a group of investors and thinkers about the potential of an area such as uh, social investing or impact investing to our Bellagio Conference Center in 2007. Uh, and so we co-created both the idea of impact investing, but also identified together and also with other colleagues, um, not at that meeting, what the field would need in order to accelerate. A foundation leader, in order to drive emergent strategy, has to think about two things. One is how to create real clarity of vision so that people know the direction we're trying to go into. But also, how do you create a system where entrepreneurial ideas can emerge and options can be jumped on? Program officers responsible for leading this initiative have to be given the time and the resources to focus on building those networks, telling those stories, and spending time out in the community. What we need to do is create a sense and adapt mechanism, and we do that by being very explicit with our thinking and then monitoring progress and changes and new ideas and trying to create a pretty short time cycle between when we can sense and when we can adapt. It was a very good supportive environment in Rockefeller to hold us accountable to having clear hypotheses and learning and testing them along the way. And I think that's the right balance between, on one hand, the leadership of the organization completely devolving authority to the program teams and on the other hand, assuming that the initial strategy needs to dictate exactly what we need to do. What the Rockefeller Foundation decided to do was to use our philanthropic capital to actually build the scaffolding, or what I sometimes call the plumbing, um, of the field. And that meant three things. First, it meant developing the metrics to assess both the social impact that the enterprises were having, but also the social impact that the investment funds were delivering. The second thing we recognized was that there needed to be a consortium, a platform, where they could learn from one another, where they could share resources, uh, and where they could source deals and, and put funds together. And so um, we, with a group of partners, created the Global Impact Investors Network. And the third thing we saw was that there needed to be some policy changes. So we were really in this, not only as a funder, but as, kind of as an activist and agitator um, for the development of the field. It's quite remarkable to us um, how much these ideas have really been able to, to take hold and not necessarily change how people or institutions operate, but empower the people in those institutions who had an inkling that this was a more effective way to work. It's to empower them to identify who else in their institution and outside that institution could be a soldier alongside them in this movement. I think that's the real legacy of what we did.